Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here, and in today's video, I just want to make a video about my iPad Air and the different apps that I use for it. So I use my iPad Air mostly for productivity, business, um, just to do kind of work, just different work things. Don't really use it to consume media that much. You know, of course I have Hulu, YouTube, Disney Plus on here, but I really don't use it all that often for that. So I'm going to cover a couple different apps that I use and that I really enjoy. And so the first app would be Notability. And Notability has been around for a long time. I actually had a video, have a video here on this channel reviewing it on the iPad too. So it's definitely been around a long time. Really good note-taking app. Um, you can have different kind of like notebooks set up and then you can have different pages for the notes or for your notebooks to kind of organize it um, different ways. You can do voice to text, just all kinds of different things. Uh, it's a full-fledged note-taking app and it's definitely worth it. And then for pr another one for productivity, would be uh, the app AnyDo. So AnyDo is a to-do list app that also can sync to your calendar. So I can view uh, the calendar here and uh, I can view the different days and then you know click on my month and see when I have uh, events scheduled. And then you can also view your tasks. So you can have different, um, different categories of tasks and then the tasks within it and then you can set them to certain times, you know, just like any other uh, to-do app. Uh, to-do list app, um, but any do is the one that I use and the one that I prefer and it's worked well for me. And so the next thing I want to do is highlight some folders that I have. And the first one would be our music folder because we're on the worship team at church. Um, I like producing and working on music in general and just, you know, messing around. So I use a couple different apps. The first one would be Prime. And so what Prime is, is it's kind of like an on-stage mixer. If you have a track that has multiple stems, you can adjust those individual stems here within the app. And then you can also add click tracks. Uh, you can plug this directly into your sound system, into a snake. Um, and you can add the click tracks separate to the actual different stems. And it's just a really f nice app. It's free. And um, if you're looking into kind of live music or music production, um, it's definitely an app worth considering. And so the next app I have is Soundboard. And basically it just functions as a soundboard. You can select different um, different clips or different songs to be on your different soundboards. And the free version has like four different boards you can set up and you can click between them. And then you can select for the songs to either fade in or just come in abruptly. Uh, I use this whenever we're running synth, synth pads um, for worship on Sundays. And uh, you can control the volume obviously. A lot of settings in here and it's just, it's a good uh, it's a good app if you're running any kind of live music and you're kind of low on team members and you just would like um, some music in the background or really just for anything. You could use this for a streaming setup um, and have different sound effects or background tracks here that you could easily click on and play. It's just a very versatile app. And then another app, if you're into music and into synth pads, is AutoPad. Um, if I can find it, oh my goodness. And basically it just has every uh, different major key in the different pads. So if I click on C, it'll play a pad in C. If I click on G, it'll fade into a pad in G. And so um, I like it. It's not the best pads that I've ever heard, but um, you can control it a little bit with the cross fade, the low pass, high pass filters, reverb, pans. So there's a couple settings in there you can mess with, but it's just a good solid app if you're just looking for something quick and easy to give you some synth pads. And now I'm going to share the folder that I use the most often, and that is my photo and video folder. And so I have a couple different apps in here. I don't use them all, but I have Polar, Photoshop Express, iMovie, LumaFusion, Camera Connect from Canon, Photo, uh, Affinity Photo, Sketchbook, and then Adobe Spark Post. And so um, I do not really use Photoshop Express that much. In my opinion, it's a garbage app. I only had it because I was really trying some stuff out with it. Um, it's not anywhere near actual Photoshop and I don't plan to buy the regular Photoshop that was released for iPad um, at least anytime soon because it's really laggy and it's just not really good. So instead I've used Affinity Photo. Now I haven't used it that much but it is really good. Um, I edited a thumbnail for uh, our vlog channel uh, earlier this year in the fall or the summer whenever this was. But it's pretty much a full-fledged app, just like Photoshop. You can work with layers, different colors, gradients, you can make stamps, brushes, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I would recommend it. It's been recommended to me by Canoopsy. 
He recommends all kinds of stuff and I ended up spending money that I don't need to, like uh, with this and LumaFusion. But it is a really good app. And um, in general, I've seen that people prefer this over Photoshop because this um, just runs smoother and all around just functions better on the iPad. So uh, I would recommend it. So check out Affinity Photo. Definitely better than Photoshop at the moment. And then another one I use is LumaFusion. And so LumaFusion is my video editor of choice on the iPad. I have used uh, an iPad Air, but I just prefer LumaFusion because I just think it works better. There's a lot more features and um, I just think there's more you can do. So, you know, obviously you have your timeline. Um, it can be a little bit confusing to navigate when you first start, but uh, I don't want to go too much into detail on LumaFusion, but you know, you can add files, sounds, clips, sound bites, you know, multiple layers of video and audio. But I have a video here on the channel um, where I show editing on the iPad Air and how it's um, somewhat, you know, pretty streamlined and it's definitely possible. And it's something you should consider if you're looking to get a device just for video editing. The iPad Air should be a contender. Um, because it can handle this 1080p video easily and can probably handle most 4K um, without stuttering too much. But LumaFusion is my video app of choice and I would definitely recommend it and I really enjoy it. But the last one that I want to recommend is something that I wish I knew existed before and I didn't really, I knew it existed but I just didn't use it because I didn't think I needed it. But it's Adobe Spark Post. Now I use that app mostly on my iPhone but it is a really good app as I close my iPad. Um, if you follow my page, Revered Beards, on Instagram, 90% of those posts are created in Adobe Spark uh, because they have just so many features on there to easily and quickly create posts for Instagram, Facebook, whatever, that you can easily create and share within minutes. Um, they have a nice set of fonts you can choose from. You can add fonts from Adobe. They have a... Uh, selection of royalty-free images that you can use. You can import and use your own images, animations. It's just really good. Now there's also Adobe Spark Video and Adobe Spark um, for writing pages, but I use Adobe Spark Post and I just, I really enjoy it. And uh, it's super simple and easy to use. And then there are a couple apps that I use uh, like Adobe Fill and Sign. I have Upwork on here, uh, the freelancing app. I use Wave for my invoices for businesses. It's free. Um, it makes good looking invoices and I don't use invoices like a lot, um, like over the top amount. Um, so I just need something just when I need to create a quick invoice, I need to just be able to create it. So I use Wave, um, Adobe Acrobat, you know, viewing PDFs, uh, YouTube Studio, obviously to manage the YouTube channels and look at them. Uh, but that's pretty much it as far as um, apps that I use on a regular basis uh, for business purposes, for productivity. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe for more videos from me. Let me know what you use down in the comment section below for your productivity. It doesn't have to be necessarily on an iPad. It could be a phone, another type of tablet or a computer. Let us know what your favorite productivity or business app is down in the comments below. And so again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.